everybody, welcome back to the Zen Perry Project. Today, I have a very special guest, the drummer of Fu Manchu, Scott Reeder. He's got the best hair in the game. He's a he's a smasher on the drums. Thanks Hello. For the show. Thank you very much. My hair thanks you. <laughs> it's pretty rad. Uh, where are you currently? Are you uh, are you in residing in California at the moment? I am always residing in California. Or, yes, yes, I am. I'm <laughs> always in Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. Great spot. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, best one I best one I've found. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, it's beautiful. Uh and you're you're prepping to go on a tour. You're gonna be going on tour in September. Uh with yeah. Fu Manchu. Uh how have you been prepping for that? What's it what's it been like? You excited for it? any and all thoughts on that? Um not doing much prep right now. I've got a little bit of an injury that I'm dealing with, so kinda Rec uh, recovering from that and just kind of, you know, keeping loose. But yeah, I mean, we, we went to Europe in June and uh, been home since July 1st. So it'll actually, we'll end up having, before it's all done, like two months in the middle of things off, which is kind of weird. But then we have two months on. So US uh, in um, September, which is with Clutch and Rival Sons which is great. And then uh, we're going back to Europe in October for more headlining shows for this record. That's rad. Um, as, you know, as much as you want to talk about it with the, with the injury, cause I, I'm a drummer myself and I, I'm always focused on like, how can I like, you know, be more ergonomic and work through stuff as, especially as I'm playing, you know, harder and, and yeah, yeah. stuff. Like what, what is something that you've kind of been focusing on as, as far as, maintaining mobility and keeping that together well i mean that's i always focus on that anyways just because of you know like you said the sort of repetitive use thing and when i teach people i try to get them to pay attention to that early so they don't have to run into the stuff that i you know usually have but this was a bicycle thing <laughs> so you couldn't i couldn't do anything about it you know it's, it sucks but uh so yeah um it won't be I, I don't skateboard for a reason. I guess now I don't ride bikes for a reason, <laughs> but I'll get back on my bike. It's just, you know, it just was a random thing. And the less, the less people you're around, I guess the better. <laughs> yeah. So it was an elbow, you, correct? Yeah. I, I, uh, I launched and I landed like this. So on my other arm, so it took the brunt, the, the brake's not really that bad. It's more like, tendon issue stuff so i'm just kind of getting that back i mean my hand's doing pretty good so i just can't turn it certain directions yet so you know we'll see we'll we'll get it there we'll get there interesting well you know it, 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 i mean just you know uh, hope hope all the recovery goes well but also it, it's oh yeah what a what a great thing that you can still you know use your arm it, you know could always be worse yeah could 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 have been a lot worse it could have been a lot worse and you know and i'm and i'm still you know, teaching, uh, and I can, the, the actually it's kind of nice because they didn't want to, they didn't want to cast you or anything like that. They want you to move it. And so the specialist guy that I went to see the other day, he said, you know, if you can do a roll motion, he's like, that's actually really good because it works the tendons that need to, and it's light impact. So, so, you know, permission granted and there you go. That, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Just try not to do too much of it. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't go on any bike rides, any, any sunset. Yeah, bikes, you know. And and then yesterday I got a new guitar uh, from Martin, and so now I'm like, oh, I can't play that either right now. So <laughs> I just look at it. Uh, so, so what kind of guitar? So I'm assuming that's for for Jacket Thief, and I guess I mean obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I got a, a new D18 from Martin, so they sent one out to me, which is awesome and uh, really nice dreadnought uh, and. Uh, yeah, I've just kind of had loner loner Martins before, so this is my first like kind of my my bucket list thing. I never thought, you know, if I was going to buy an acoustic, I would be like, oh, that would be the one I would want, but you know, I'll buy this instead. So this it just ended up working out okay. So I'm I'm happy. Yeah. What a yeah. what a blue ball thing to send you a guitar while you're recovering from an injury, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hopefully in an, hopefully in another week I'll be able to make some chord shapes and stuff, you know. So I just gotta like be patient with it and just you know, kind of rehab. So yeah, lots of acupuncture, lots of massage therapy, deer antler, you know, <laughs> the whole thing, voodoo, whatever, <laughs> wild turkey. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> all yeah, all those combines being able to play yeah, drums and rock band again. <laughs> yeah, throw it throw it into the mix, you know. Uh, that's sick. Well, let's uh let's let's get right into stuff about Fu Man Chu. What's yeah. it like, what's it like being part of a band that's been a band since I mean, I, I guess their first inception was probably uh, mid eighties, but I mean the first, you know, real stuff started coming around like early nineties, nineteen ninety. What's it what's it like being in a band that has such a legacy like that? That's been through so many, you know, iterations. Uh yeah, I mean it's shit. I mean, one could really only hope for that, right? So I mean, but you don't really ever expect it, you know. So uh yeah, I mean I think it's great because we're just always kind of focused on the next thing, you know. I mean I, I know that we've put out, uh, I mean, the fewer records, studio albums, you know, recently, which really wasn't, you know, I think just with everything that happened in the year that we won't talk about, um, the, uh, we probably would have done more, but, you know, I mean, we still managed to stay busy. It's my dog, Lila. Um, hey, what up? Um, <laughs> We managed to stay busy and we're really stoked about the new album. Uh, we really, really like it. And uh, it's one of those things that's like, uh, I think it's, I mean, at least in my tenure in the band, it's my favorite thing that we've done. Um, just because it's, it kind of touches on a lot of stuff that we haven't done before. And I think we pulled it off and it's, you know, has continuity to it. And, you know, it's, it's like, you're always, um, with being in the band this long and stuff that you always try and put a set list together that represents the things that you know people want to hear that you want to play and um and obviously when it's a new record you know and people aren't too familiar with it you don't want to put too much out there but it's kind of like we i mean we'd like to play the whole damn thing you know but we don't have time so we're gonna you know we want to lean into it though so we'll probably be doing more you know when we do the clutch this clutch tour we're the first of three so we won't be playing i think only like 40 minutes so not a lot of time to put a lot of stuff in but um yeah i mean we're looking forward to doing our own headlining thing in the states probably sometime next year but yeah i mean that's that's really the thing is just knowing that we have a, a really good new record out that we really like is is super satisfying you know yeah, and the record sounds great. And uh, I was just watching your live um, Hellfest thing, and you and you guys played at least a few songs from the new album, and it seemed extremely well received. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, they, they've yeah, they've really gone over pretty well, um, and and they're just like um, they feel really good to play them live, and and they're kind of like at least. Uh, you know, from a drummer standpoint, it, you kind of are always sort of fighting that adrenaline thing and not trying to play too fast, you know. But those songs, especially, I think you really have to watch the tempos and uh, be aware that if you think it's if you think it's a little too fast or a little too slow, actually, it's it's not. It's right in the pocket, you know. And uh, but those songs in particular, I think we were playing like. Uh, uh, Return of Tomorrow, Loch Ness, Wrecking Machine, and uh, Hands of the Zodiac. And all of those, you can really tell if they're in the thing, if they're in the right pocket, if you look and you see people's heads doing this. So right. one one beat slightly less or more, the heads don't move the right way. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, I love that. It's a it's instant instant feedback right there. And that's, and that's what your guys' music is about. It's like, it's always been about just that, that chug, that... I heard it described as like if if you can like pick up and uh, up like a heavy book and like drop it down in in time, that's how you know a song is good. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I mean, I like you watch those people, you know, at the festivals like doing the wall of death to like our stuff, you know. And I'm just gonna like, whoa, does that? I thought that was only for like, you know, super fast stuff. But then they just pick it and there's like whatever moves them. So I'm I'm happy to be a part of that. <laughs> yeah, um, wall of death. <laughs> that's great i've i've played in some bands that were just like i'm like i, I can't believe people are moshing right now like it's it was like yeah some, like, corny americana band i'm like people are gonna do what they're gonna do and uh exactly I, let uh, them do it yeah let them do it i mean let so do it so return for of tomorrow was your first album in six years so and you were you know talking was it was music more recently made or was it over that whole time period or was it over that year that we don't talk about well, I mean, we we actually so the plan was 
uh, and that year, what we were going to do, since this was our 30th anniversary, is we were going to do three EPs of three songs each, you know, so two or two new ones and like a cover on each one. And so, uh, so that's what we did. And, you know, it ended up being stretched out because we couldn't go in the studio and stuff. Uh, but um, we did actually put all of those together in a release uh, that came out. It was basically a kind of a compendium of volume one to uh, one through three. But we didn't want to put them out in order of how they were released. So we sequenced it like it was a record, you know, uh, so that that way it had a you know a nice flow to it. Um, so it's not just, you know, the, the order of how the EPs came out. And then we did a special packaging, which was like, you know, kind of a, a, a mirrored embossed thing. I don't know if you saw it. it looks like the Kiss Double Platinum record. And it's just called Volume 1 through 3. So, I mean, the idea with that was, you know, um, I, you know I, I, don't, I don't know if it was me or Bob that was like, you know, we should do this like this. And, and it'll be kind of like our own version of Diver Down, you know, with our our covers and and then we got uh um uh what's his name from clutch oh neil uh, the singer i was gonna i was just gonna say fallon but that's not his last <laughs> his last name so neil the grand wizard of neil uh who writes the best lyrics in rock condoleezza rice is nice but i deserve a roni <laughs> i prefer a roni that's right um so uh we got him to sing on million miles away on the uh plimsoll song uh which was you know from valley girl we did the surf punks uh my wave and then obviously the doobie brothers song was on there and then we threw on the uh we threw on the working man cover that we did uh the rush song um at the end of it and we had done that as just sort of a charity single on the anniversary of uh neil's passing to just try to uh put forth money for the uh cedar sinai brain cancer research uh so we never it was just a, a digital single we never released it but uh they gave us permission to put it out on this so that was cool of them that's super cool yeah what was uh what was like the process of of recording all of this like where do you guys have your own studios he has prefer we have a studio well no we don't have a studio but there's a we've been working with jim Monroe, uh who is actually at a place called the racket room in uh, santa Ana for i pretty much i think since clone of the universe um so we worked with him on that uh and then we recorded everything there um and so we would just go in you know i mean we pretty much it's three songs because you knock it out in a day as far as the drum tracks go and uh just tried to have them ready and you know when we had uh, we, i mean we had everything for the first one done at the beginning of 20 and then you know as things went along we kind of went back in in 21 i think and then maybe in 22 got the third one out so instead of three in one year it was three every year <laughs> you know or, or one every year i should say i can't count what the hell um so yeah so that was kind of like instead of just having there be such a lull in new material I mean, we had a we had planned i mean we would go on the road and play those songs and we did i think the last tour we did we were doing like strange plan and there's definitely other ones we did work we did the working man cover and you know we'll probably revisit it but i really like the running order of that too and how it turned out it's and the way it was recorded it's it's a pretty good uh just you know time capsule or a good bumper between records and then this one uh we pretty much took all of last year to just kind of write and arrange and get ready uh we went and we did the drums in november uh, at a place called uh, Studio in Simi Valley, really nice drum room there. And uh, and then usually it takes us about three weeks to do a record um, from start to finish recording, mix, mastering. This one took about a month and a half just because it was a you know, double and we were doing it over the holidays. So, cause we were trying to get it done before the end of the year, but that didn't work. So, but yeah, we were really, really well rehearsed. I mean, I, I did the drums for the whole record in a day. And then um, we also did it like in order too. So, and most of that stuff that, that, that's on there is like first or second takes. So no, no third takes. We didn't, we didn't use any third takes. <laughs> wow. So oh, well, I was, I was to do in a day. 
Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's varied as far as the material goes. And I mean, there's definitely, I guess, you know, listen, <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're really, we don't, we don't work on stuff in the studio. I mean, I don't think anybody does that now because you just don't have the time. So you better have your shit together when you go in there. Um, cause, uh, it's not, you know, you don't want to waste time doing it. So yeah, we were really well rehearsed and, uh, yeah, it went pretty quickly. And, uh, I, I just kept knocking them out and those guys were like, I mean, I was like, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Okay. We took a break. We came back, we did record number two, which was in a way a little bit harder because you had to sort of reserve because a lot of it was the mellower stuff and longer drawn out. But even those songs that are a little bit longer, I think they were like, you know, all of them were like one take, you know, maybe, maybe two, but that's it. So yeah. well, I got, you know, yeah, I got lucky. I don't think that'll ever happen again, but you know, who <laughs> knows? You never know. I was like, yeah, 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 are you just a one take wonder? Has that always been your thing? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, it's usually like, I, I mean, I, I don't like to do more than three takes unless I'm, you know, if I'm screwing up a section a lot, then I, I don't have a problem like, okay, the first half was good. We'll punch in the last half. That's fine. And I don't, I don't use click, so I can pretty much play to what I've done and then, you know, drop in. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's usually, I don't, if I can't get it in three, then I would just rather move on to something else and come back to it, you know, because you're just not, I don't, you know, I know people like to beat things over the head and you hear those stories about people doing 30 takes. I mean, that's bullshit because you always, you always end up coming back to the first or second thing you did anyways. So I just don't, you know, and I, and it's like, I'm not going to split hairs if there's like a slight mistake or something, you know, unless it's glaring and, you know, it's a, it's a bass drum placement or something, then it's kind of like, it depends on the session too. I mean, if it's our stuff, then, you know, we have the final say if it was somebody else and they were kind of like, you know, I think we should do maybe a couple more, you know, and do it a little bit differently then that's, that's, I don't have an issue with that. That's fine. You know, cause that's just part of somebody's process. So. Yeah. Interesting. So you don't use a track. Uh, are you guys doing live? Are you going off of scratch tracks? No. Uh, well, I mean, we just we just get in a room and play together. Same. And that's kind of the best way to do it, you know, because then it's kind of like if there's any tempo fluctuations or, you know, things like that, um, because all their stuff is scratched. They don't keep any of it, you know, maybe some of the bass to start with, but then they all go back and replay their stuff. So. Gotcha. But as far as the arrangements go, I mean, we, we've worked all that stuff out ahead of time. So it's like we have to have eye contact, you know, as far as, you know, passageways and timing things, you know, and, and getting from parts, you know, where stuff speeds up and slows down. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I used a click once uh, in the studio, but I didn't with Fu Manchu, but I didn't use it through an entire song that we would start it. And then I just had it for reference and then I had the engineer take it out of my headphones. And then um, I think on that session, we actually stopped using it after two or three songs because he went back and he was like, he's like, yeah, I just kept it going and you're right on it. And I'm like, oh, then let's not use it then. <laughs> What's the point, you know? Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, how do you, how do you kind of separate because you're you're a teacher you're uh you're a music yeah. teacher and you know how to read and mm -hmm. you've, been, you've been reading drums for a long time right that's the mm -hmm. that's guy you got into drumming was through school if i'm yeah mistaken mm -hmm. yeah you, yep. your, uh, teacher had a i don't know you should say the story of how it pulled together a drum kit for you yeah she um well you know public school didn't have a lot of dough uh and so she uh, got our concert bass drums, like a big 38 inch bass drum. And I had my, you know, concert snare, my premier snare. And, uh, she had, I think it was like a pair of, uh, concert band cymbals, you know, that you would use, uh, some old Zildjian's put those together on a stand. And, uh, she got a copy of realistic rock Carmine a piece. And uh, she said, I think this is a good book for us to learn some uh, beats out of, you know, some basic beats. Uh, I don't think at the time there probably wasn't too many drum books uh, like like that. You know, now there's tons of them. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, uh, I that's kind of what I started with. And, you know, it took me 
took me a little bit uh, just to kind of get the coordination down. But then once I got it, it was like that. And I was like, oh, and then I was off. And I still teach out of that same book today, you know, not that actual copy, but I mean, I, I still teach out of the realistic rock book, you know, for people. And I've played through it, you know, 10 or 12 times by myself over the past few years, just, um, it's just a good book to go back and, you know, even stuff that you already know and things that you might already be doing. Um, it's nice to just kind of keep up on the, the skills and, uh, and, and then, you know, you can kind of go through things you've known before, but then like maybe catch things that you didn't get right the first time and, you know, do your own variations on it. And so it's, um, yeah, it's totally, I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I still have my first, uh, copy of funky primer oh nice uh, that book has seen some shit now <laughs> yeah 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 well that that one and i think realistic rock and then i use the i use the uh the pink bible the uh joel rothman basic drumming you know revised and revised and revised and revised um uh and so those are always good you know those are always good to go back to but then you know there's so many different w ways to get you know, tabs now and, and, um, you know, exercises and, and I mean, when I, when I started teaching 20 years ago, it was really just by accident. I was work I was at a working at a drum store between tours and there was a teacher or they had teachers there. And the guy there, he's like, you know, it would be great if you would teach between tours. And I'm like, okay, you know, but these guys already have clientele and I don't want to take anybody away. And so I had, uh, uh, there was a couple people that came in and bought kits, but they wanted lessons, but they didn't want to come to the place. So I was like, I'll, I'll just go to their house. And then I ended up working in a neighborhood nearby. And then there was like, this other person wants lessons. That person wants lessons. This is, and it just kind of snowballed from there. And so, but now it's like, I don't, I don't do really in homes anymore. It's, it's all, um, in studio or online, yeah. but, um, yeah, it's, it's super, I mean, I, you know, super lucky to be yeah. able to do that and to be able to, you know, continue because it's really like my, it continues my education as well, always. And I always just kind of think of like, I'm, I'm learning something from them as well, you know, always like learning how to be, because not, I, I don't think of it, I don't think of it as a one size fits all, you know, everybody has a different learning, uh, you know, different learning capacity is some people are better at the ear. Some people are better at notes. Um, some people are better visually, um, you know, and so I just try to balance what's best for the student and then always try to bring in, you know, the, uh, the academic side of it as well. So that that way they get some of that, you know, and if we run into issues, you know, I can't count this. Well, it's like, well, you got to, you got to be able to count the basics, you know, I don't know how to get to this fill, you know? So, and I get people that come in that have like, you know, have been playing for years and have habits that they want to change. And sometimes it's just a matter of looking at like physically, you know, how they approach the drum kit. You know, if your ride symbols like way over here, why the hell does my arm hurt? Gee, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't hurt if you put it right here, <laughs> you know, but again, it's like, I didn't know that I had to go through, you know, years and years of, you know, and I'm still, you know, messing around with my kit to see what's comfortable. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked to be teaching. I hope to uh, never retire. Yeah. I always consider I that have... thing that I'm going to like stop, you know, I re retire too. It's like just teaching drums to people. I think it, it's super fun. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it's not, you know, I'm not working. The guy that's pouring cement today out in Riverside, he's working. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not doing that. Hey, you're I mean, drum kit. I got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super awesome. Uh, so and shout out, we'll, we'll, uh, link to your, your website about getting drum lessons from you. Maybe I should go to yeah. if, uh, you know, when you're not on tour, um, I always, which is this month, <laughs> which is happening this you know? month. It just uh, happened. Yeah. Um, so I always had an issue when I was uh, like teaching a lot or I, when I went to school of separating like, like rock and roll bombastic, like, I don't care, like punk rock mentality with like the the education 
And mm-hmm. is, is that ever been something you've kind of worked with? Or I honestly, and some people will give me shit for just like, oh, what you teach? And it's like, what, what mm-hmm. do you teach it with the drum set? Just play it. Like, is that something you've ever thought about? Of just playing the drums? <laughs> yeah, or just, or just or- like, how, what is what is teaching do for you? What is what is learning and actually like knowing how to read do for you? Well, you know, I mean, I I, 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 I like all kinds of music. Um, there's very few kinds that I don't like. Um, even the stuff that I'm not really a, a super big fan of, I can appreciate. You know, I can I can always find something positive in it. But the one thing that I don't find positive to or I don't find positive is sucking on purpose and saying oh man that's attitude or that's rock and roll or whatever I mean it's like I I I like to practice I'm just one of those guys I've always liked to practice um and that doesn't mean that I'm it's just my my mentality is you know there's no shortcuts to any of that and I think anybody that's that's done anything long enough that they like and they try to get better at will tell you that that you don't you know you don't get from a to b by going around you know it's you have to put the time in and if you're not willing to put the time in and you want to then there's a there's a ceiling to where you'll get and i don't want to reach the ceiling you know and and all that means for me is that just personally like um i don't think i've i never think that i have it you know, that I got it, I can stop working on that. No, because, you know, stop playing for two weeks and watch what happens. You come back and you sit down and you're like, what the hell? I thought I could do that, you know? So, uh, but, you know, that being said, I mean, I think it's great that there's people out there that can just, you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead, you know? Uh, And just, I don't know. It's like, I'm not there's so much music out there that's great i mean there would be no back black flag there wouldn't be any circle jerks there wouldn't be any of that stuff that i love you know if those guys were like you know educated you know and and the the flip side of that is there's plenty of people that have education that let it get in the way of that kind of thing too where they don't you know they they're so uh paralyzed by analysis that they can't just emote and I don't know who it was that said, you got to get up off that thing and let it breathe, you know? So it's like, don't let it be stiff, you know? I mean, try and look at the spaces between the notes and stuff. But I mean, that's the thing. I'm always just kind of, you know, because the minute you think you have it, somebody comes along and does something that you've never heard before. And usually nowadays, it's just something that's relatively simple, but it's just like tasteful. And I just go like, fuck, man. All right cool and it used to be the kind of thing you know where you would go like oh that guy oh god i'd I'd quit you know i i'm never gonna get but now it's more like you know okay cool i'm inspired you know i love that you know it's yeah it's like steve jordan said he's like you know go go to see as much music especially live music as you can all types you know always be in the in the mode of like soaking up and and uh you know brad brad said that too uh, to me, uh, our bass player and savant uh, pedal sound maker, man. I mean, because he's an amazing guitar player. And, you know, it's not really like, even when you're creating, you know, stuff, if like, I mean, obviously I don't play guitar like Bob or Scott uh, does, or even Brad, you know, but I like more acoustic type stuff, but I like riffs and, 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 uh, but I, I don't do that thing where I go like, well, that, you know, I can't do that because it's not the type of music that I play. It's like, I just play music. I don't give a damn what it is, you know? And that's Brad, Brad put that down to me. He's like, just play music, just do it. You know, don't ma- don't think about what it's for or where it fits or whatever. It's like, whatever comes out, just do it. You know, even if it's something silly that makes you laugh, just do it. And don't think about the pretense of it because that's bullshit. You yeah, know? but then when you do when you do record something or you do make something, you know, it's like don't you know commit to it. Even if it's something super simple, commit to the simplicity of it, and don't you know don't go well. I can just kind of like half-ass my way through that because I've I've gotten learned 
you know, a lot of times about like showing up for a session or something like that and not being as fully prepared as I should have and going like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ease my way into this. No, uh, -uh. it's whenever that happens, uh, it bites you in the ass, you know, at least for me. So, <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. I, so I, yeah, I, I like, I, I like to practice. I, I don't, you know, and I'm not, I'm not into the, you know, I think sucking is sucking and being good is being good and being sloppy just for the, the, uh, the attitude of it or whatever, you know, if you're, that's your, your, if you're thinking more about that than you are about getting your, your stuff right, then, you know, it's kind of like, how are you going to know if you screw up or not? <laughs> For sure. You know, but again, you know, some people, it doesn't really matter. So, cause they just have an innate thing and they do what they do. And that's just my approach to it. Yeah. No, I, I, I that, that was very succinct. I, I love, I loved uh, the line, you know, just don't suck on purpose or, uh yeah uh, and i think life's, life's too sh life's too short to suck on purpose <laughs> yeah. yeah unless you just want to you know uh unless you want to really lose at monopoly you know it's like i fold i'm out <laughs> yeah i can't do that well i think it's such an ego thing too it's like you people assume that they're just like so naturally talented but i think talent is something that you really have to like nurture um yeah well uh, and everybody, and everybody I mean, can do that in their own way <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's like I know plenty of people out there that have talent that waste it. Oh, you know, they wait. I mean, and it's like you'd never, you know. And I, I, I don't know why, but I've I've just always been aware of the fact that you don't, you don't take your your what are your gifts for granted. You know, you don't, and you don't do things that at least I don't think you should do things that would hinder that. You know, like. Uh, fall off a bicycle and jack up your arm, <laughs> you know, but I mean, just the whole, like, you know, getting wasted and playing and stuff. I was always just kind of like, if that shit makes me play bad, even if it makes me play good, then that's a problem because I want to play good. Cause I play good. I don't want to play good. Cause something made me play good. I want to make sure I can do that on my own, you know? Yeah. And so it's kind of like, if I, you know, everybody's had a gig where they've, you know, maybe had like, Oh, maybe one, one too many glasses of wine at dinner or something like that. And then you don't think it's going to affect your performance and it does. And you're like, Whoa, okay. Got to dial that in, you know, but those have been few and far between. So I've been lucky in that way. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the different approaches that you have for like sun and sail club and Fu Manchu? Cause you, and also I want to talk about your drum sets cause there's some beautiful Ludwig kits. Um, yay. Yeah. Drum porn. Drum porn. Let's get into it. Let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, first off, how do you approach these two bands differently? Drumming and then also talk about the kits. Like what, what sort of shit do you have? Um, it's just it all really just depends on the songs, really. That's it. You know, it's like um not to I, I, I mean, try not to default to things that I would just do, you know, and be aware of you know, because you can get into patterns of just repeat, you know, and it's, and there might be things about riffs that are similar to other things that feel the same way, you know, but I mean, especially like, you know, when you're playing a, a, a fast song, you don't want to try and do the same exact thing that you did before and maybe vary it. But again, it also, it really just depends on what's presented to you, you know, it's very, it's very rare that it's kind of like, oh, this starts with a drum thing, you know. So, I, I mean, that's, that's really it. And it's like, Bob writes all the stuff for Sun and Sail. So, I mean, he will just send me, he usually sends me demos of stuff and he'll have, uh, I, uh, I always curse him the, uh, the garage band drummer, Anders. <laughs> I'm like that fucking Anders again, but I never listen to it. I always just mute it. Cause I don't want to hear it. And then I'll, I'll do you know, maybe a couple of different versions of things, you know, that I that I would hear and uh, and then just we'll kind of pick which one works. But then, you know, with Fu Manchu, I mean, we get in the room, and we work it out, uh, you know, and just kind of it, it really, you know, some sometimes I can play some things that maybe they weren't that whoever's got the riff in mind, that's really not the way that they thought of it, um, unless someone has a you know, can you do a beat that's kind of like this? Then it's kind of like, okay, yeah, 
we can do that, you know. And really, I mean, I just always try and start with like the most basic thing just to kind of support, you know, the song or whatever. Uh, but uh, if I can do, you know, more, then that's kind of like once the, the basic stuff is, you know, established, then you kind of add more to it. So, but that's kind of what I, you know, I, I've played with enough different kinds of people and, and seen, you know, what's necessary, you know, for songs, basically, you know, because that's kind of what I'm more of a fan of, you know, is song drumming than, you know, just kind of, blah, 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 you know, I like a lot of that stuff, too. But I mean, that's kind of like when you're, you know, when you start dr as a drummer, you fill up all the space, you know, with all the fast stuff that you can play. And you're not like a guitar player or piano guy where you can lean on melody when you're practicing, you know. So you're trying to make it interesting to you. But then when you get in a room and play with people, you got to listen, you know. So, so yeah, it took me 20 years to learn how to listen. <laughs> really? All right. No, no, I'm still learning. Uh, but, you know, no, it's just, you know, you that's that's why there's stuff that, you know, lasts because it's a the stuff that lasts. is like it's a conversation, whether it's, you know, hardcore punk or whatever. I mean, it's like th those guys are, they're still listening to each other, you know, and they're still kind of like pushing and pulling each other and stuff like that. They're not just blithely playing whatever they want to play, you know? For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would, I would definitely say like between, between your bands, like there's different styles and you're, you're rocking, uh, you're rocking different drums in them. I would say, you know, for Fu Manchu, it looks like more of like a, your standard kit um and then uh yeah what so i guess what are you what are you rocking for your ludwig kits what's your go-to your favorite kit you have? um my i mean my the the sort of the nucleus of the setup is always just like you know snare tom two floors and a kick yeah. and then you know the stuff that's kind of added to that i mean if it's like i usually try to have like something to my left because i like to work my left hand and do stuff you know, that I, I don't want to have to really think about too much, but I want to put my hands in places where I normally wouldn't as far as like, you know, approaching a fill and seeing what happens just to have that, you know, left handed floor tom there or something, you know. And then, uh, you know, yeah, I've messed around with like roto toms, concert toms, uh, you know, maybe two toms in front or just, but it's usually, I usually go back to, uh, excuse me, I usually will go back to like just the one rack tom thing, you know, and have that be sort of because I, I, I mean, I feel like that's just kind of like, even for people that play really big drum kits, I mean, they'll tell you that it's really all centered around that kick snare, you know, rack tom floor tom thing like, you know, the four piece kit. It's kind of yeah. like, and if you can't, if you can't do it with that, then you can't do it with a bunch of stuff, you know. So, I mean, I, I always, you know, and sometimes, you know, there'll be instances where we play places too, where it's like the, the, the stage won't fit even a second floor Tom, you know? So you go back to playing, you know, a four piece kit and it makes, it makes you think, you know, I remember I auditioned for a band, uh, and, uh, I forgot my hi hats. <laughs> and so I had to do the audition with just crash and ride and stuff, you know, but it made me like, I was super like vigilant and aware and like dynamically trying to like dial it back a little bit, you know, and, uh, and I got the gig, so I guess it must've worked, <laughs> but you know, it always, it, it, by, by you start taking stuff away, if you depend on it all, you start taking it away and you really have to like, think about, okay, what do what is it that I really need for this? And then if I want to expand on it, can I, can I do it with, you know, a four piece kit? And it's like all those jazz drummers could definitely do it, you know, put Mitch Mitchell on a, on a four piece kit. He probably rip the shit out of it, you know? Oh, for sure. You know? So it's like, you know, obviously, you know, Bonham used to play a four piece kit. It's like, you know, it, it, I, I recommend that to everybody. If they have a bigger drum kit, like play, the smallest version of it that you can, you know, play a, a set of your own music with it um, and see what you have to come up with creatively, you know, and uh, it's a, it's a good challenge. Who are some of your favorite drummers right now that are inspiring you? Some people you've seen, some of your, you know, 
friends bands whatever anybody that you you look up to or just um i mean i i always like uh i always like jean paul from uh, clutch oh yeah you know he's kind of like a you know he's it's great to be able to go on tour with him and watch him every night so that's going to be educational uh so yeah I, I like him um i like the guy from um uh this guy that plays for a band called uh once and future band a guy named raj uh up in oakland those guys are really cool um but his drumming is really really great it's kind of like old style sort of progressive rock but with jazz stuff thrown into it um I've been listening a lot to like bad, bad, not good. Those guys, that, that guy's pretty awesome. Um, but then, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I like, um, I like, uh, you know, art Cruz from Lamb of God. Uh, I like that guy a lot. Um, trying to think who else there's, I mean, there's always like a lot of people that, yeah, there's a lot of people that, you know, I, I hear all the time and I'm like, Whoa, um, I, um, shoot. I I just have to look at my, I go through phases, you know, Oh, for sure. sometimes I'll be, sometimes I'll be like, Oh, really into the meters for a while, you know, and then get really into like, you know, tool for a little bit. And then, you know, go through a Roger Taylor phase, you know, um, and then, you know, go through a Bill Bruford phase and, you know, like all the, all that kind of stuff. It just kind of comes and goes of, of the, of the more modern people though. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I've been listening to the guy who play, I don't know what his name is, but the guy who plays drums for idols, that guy's rad. John Beavis. Uh, yes. I just talked to, uh, the drummer of Gustav. And they're okay. On, they went on tour with idols. Yeah. Uh, and she was that guy's insane. That. The guy's insane. You know, the other guy that's really good too, that I don't think, uh, and I've had to teach quite a, a, a bit of his stuff is that band Phoenix, the French band. Yeah. Those guys are, I mean, for, especially that, that album that was really popular. There's that Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, uh, record yeah. that had those hits on it. You go back and listen to some of the drumming on there and you're like, what the hell is he doing? You know, it's a lot of like really weird misplaced stuff that's, you know, it's pop drumming, but it's not. But it works um, well, though. Yeah. I know. I, I yeah. actually saw a live video of them recently, like a month ago, and I was like, mm -hmm. that is a lot crazier than I thought it was. Yeah, it is. It's a lot more involved. I mean, that song Listomania, the first time yeah. I had to teach it, I'm like, what the, what is that? You know? So it's, I've been kind of discovering that kind of stuff, and it's pretty cool um to get in there and see but the the idols drummer is like that guy i i don't even i didn't know what his name was but because i just recently kind of got interested in those guys and uh i think that i think that guy's you know pretty shredding He's a machine and then uh, i like i like the guy from uh, arctic monkeys too great yeah um and i i don't know his name <laughs> but i like i mean he always plays some really interesting stuff the guy in uh, royal blood too what's his name ben Ben, yeah, you know, ben, G yeah, ben, 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 Gib ben Gibbard or something like that. Thatcher. I don't know if that's ben his Thatcher. last name. Ben Thatcher, yeah. Ben, okay, okay, Reason okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was probably, mid I was probably word checking somebody else, but he's, he's, I mean, exactly, you know, he's got to be really creative with what he does because there's two of them, you know. Yeah. And he's, you know, not, he's not just sitting back there and like playing the two and four, you know, but it's, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff out there that's, you know really really good i think and it's not just uh i probably didn't really even name any like heavy rock drummers but you know well i mean art cruises for sure you know <laughs> and uh he's awesome though he's i mean i didn't think anybody could you know really uh take chris adler's place but then you know yeah i always thought that was a great thing about teaching too is like i was i was teaching some kids and i would get introduced to some like willow uh mm -hmm. i was i had to teach them and she did some stuff with travis barker and i was like this is crazy like it's, yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's well, kind of the cool thing about teaching that you're learning about this new stuff that's coming out yeah and i have i'll have people that'll bring like in you know they'll bring in like hip-hop stuff that they want to learn and you know that kind of stuff like i was listening i uh 
what's that song monks by frank ocean that i was teaching and that you know that song is clearly it's cut up pieces of other stuff right but then you know like those guys go on tour and they take a real drummer out and then the drummer's got to play this stuff so if you're trying to play a stuff that like a machine is not really you know they're not super adhering to time structure but it's got to be on the beat so it's like if they got to cut like a half a beat to make it fit they'll do it you know so having to do that and make make your playing a little bit more angular on purpose is pretty interesting you know it take it, it makes you think think about stuff in a different way but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff out there that are you know that's like um it, it just you you have to be open to it you know you can't just be like oh that sucks that guy's just trying to do you know i mean there's definitely some things that you go like ah i might as well just listen to the original yeah. <laughs> you know but you know there's plenty of stuff out there that's really good and a lot of people that are you know playing good stuff and and interested the guy from 21 pilots that guy's great yeah um i Got can't remember what the like that I, yeah yeah, I can't remember what his name is. I mean, that's, I'm I'm bad with names of guys unless they're you know stuck in my head really really good. But every time somebody brings me a song like that, I go like, oh okay, this guy's really you know he's really playing some interesting stuff and thinking a little bit more. You know, I hate that outside of the box term, but you know maybe he's thinking outside the square. Yeah, or maybe they're just yeah. playing more like themselves, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're not trying to be like, you know, they're not trying to be a Bonham guy or, a, you know, a Scott Travis guy or a Travis Barker guy. They're just being them, you know? Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, also, thank you for taking the time to do this. It's a, I just got a few more questions for you, but I definitely want to yeah. talk about Jacket Thief. Um, okay. Yeah, and how, how did this come about? And also, you have some awesome riffs. And you oh. and uh, kind of how this come about, and uh, what do you have going in the future for it? Because I think it's really cool. Um, that you know, this, that was just uh, things that I've been working on for well, some of them for you know twenty years. So uh, or or versions of songs that I you know written with friends or just had sitting around and like, you know, it's like, I'd really like to record a version of that or something. So, and then uh, just getting into, you know, playing stuff a little bit more and then finally just going like, well, you dick, if you're ever going to make a record, now's the time to do it. So, you know, I, I had enough songs uh, and I didn't know, uh, if I could do it all myself, especially the singing part. But I worked with my friend Ryan Mall in his studio over here in Costa Mesa. It's just a backyard studio, you know, one one room basically. We cut the drums live and we would we I, we did that album basically in like 13 sessions. So if we would have done it, you know, in consecutive, uh, we probably would have had it done in two weeks. You know, and then it took about two weeks to mix, but it was spread out over like a year and a half because I would just get in there, you know, when I had time because I was like, you know, how am I going to do it? We do the drums in the first part of the day, then we'll do the rhythm tracks of the guitar and then I'll put the bass on last because I suck at bass and uh, and uh, and then the vocals, you know, after that. Um, but yeah, he really pushed me in certain ways. And I mean, honestly, I was just like, I don't know. You know, some of the demos I really liked, some of them I didn't, but it really taught me a lot about like you, you just let things go until the very, like, don't be sold on one version because you can change it, you know, right up to the end, which I did, which is the cool part about the, the process for me anyways, of just kind of like writing stuff. And so, yeah, I've got about five, I, I've, I've been working on more stuff. I've got about... But about six or seven songs that I really like, and I got about seven more ideas that I need to flesh out to get about ten. So I'm hoping that uh, that's what happens uh, when my hand gets better enough to play this guitar. <laughs> that I'll open it up, and the rest of the songs will just, you know, kind of. It's just a I have to get arrangements and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I've got a a phone full of riffs and ideas and versions, 12 different versions of the same thing as it just gets kind of whittled down. And then, uh, and then I just cut the demos myself, basically. Same Sick. thing. 
I, I think it's just it, it's so cool and i was uh i was listening to you today and it, it, it's some cool stuff you got some great great riffs in there that thanks like, yeah i mean i've been playing a lot more stuff that's just like in kind of weird tunings which i'm kind of I'm setting myself up for disaster because if I ever have to play any of this stuff live, I'm going to need like 12 guitars <laughs> or at least, you know, somebody who will tune them all for me. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. But I definitely want to do that. I want to play some shows and I want to, uh, but I need it. I think I need another record to do that, you know, and then I would have plenty of stuff to choose from. So. Gotcha. Well, let's get into a lightning round really quick. Just, uh -oh. get, just shout okay. out, you know, Okay. You ready? Uh, I think so. <laughs> All right. Best make and model for a tour van. Uh, that's, uh, has to be the 15 passenger Econoline. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which I don't think they make anymore, but I hope they do. <laughs> still sell them. You know, they're, they're still, they're pretty expensive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> benches, benches all the way, man. Hell yeah, dude. All yeah. right. Last, last book you read or are currently reading? Ooh, um, I am currently trying to get, I've been, it's a hard, it's a hard read. This book called Sapiens. Uh, I read it. Yeah. 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 And I pick it up and I, I read like two or three chapters and then I'll put it down. So I'm reading that and I'm also reading, um, Cinema Speculation by Quentin Tarantino, which I'm almost finished with. Ooh, I gotta check that out. Yeah, that that's good. It's 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 really good. All right. You know? All right. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, there's definitely some stuff. Uh, he has a really good uh, critique, not critique, but just a it's just a really good deep dive into Dirty Harry and to uh, a lot of Jim Brown movies and Taxi Driver and uh, Paul Schrader stuff and Brian De Palma stuff and just like a lot of really cool, you know. It's just the, it's a very interesting book and plus it's like you can hear his voice in it you know yeah. and i just i love the way he is uh he's just like he's like a music nerd is about music you know he's just yeah. he's all about this all about cinema and just the the essence of it and like the the deep dive you know so kudos i'm definitely book. You know, i think that's gonna be my next book for yeah. sure um, yeah, it's a good one. Who in Fu Manchu has the biggest gear problem? Biggest gear problem? You mean like they don't like their gear or they have stuff that goes down or they have so much or like they, they, uh, they get in the probably weak. probably me because those guys are generally pretty on their stuff, you know. I mean Scott's stuff is pretty he doesn't really fuss with too much as far as, you know, uh going outside of what he normally uses he might like add a little bit of things to it brad's is extremely simple bob's probably has the most complicated because of you know the pedals and stuff um but they don't i mean the gear is by and large i would imagine compared to other people's thing uh other people's gear pretty simple you know and even my we don't really have gear issues you know it's just Probably because we don't have wireless, <laughs> and we don't have and we don't have in ears either. So you know, some guy right. asked me, he was like, hey, "Why would you use in ears?" I'm like, "I have an acoustic instrument. Why would I use in ears? It doesn't make sense to me." Yeah, you know? no, that's interesting. I, uh -oh. I mean, if I was if I was if in a band where you know, like you know, there was three part harmonies going on, I could see it then. Yeah, but you know, I, I when I do like when I have like backing backing tracks and stuff like that i mean that makes sense but yeah there's no reason to really have them if you just if you're just a rock band just playing rock yeah yeah i mean i think i would rather even if i had backing tracks i'd, I'd rather just play with some headphones on you know yeah i don't know sure. yeah um favorite jacket you've ever had stolen from you let's see uh i had a Shoot, what was that? Um, I had a really nice pea coat that went missing. <laughs> Navy issue, man. But I'm glad you had an answer for that because <laughs> at least, the, at least, the, at least that's what the tag said on it. Yeah, I don't know if it went. I don't know if somebody stole it or if I left it someplace. But yeah, oh, it was sure. like one. 
it was one of those ones that probably stolen because it was one of those ones that was like kind of it wasn't custom fitted but it fit me perfectly it wasn't too big wasn't too small you know yep yeah all right we're just probably a, probably a drummer that stole it yeah of course yeah it's always a drummer yeah always <laughs> They could always use another coat because they're always uh, mm-hmm. the most broken in the, in the bunch. Uh, weirdest time you were mistaken for Scott Reader? Um, by Scott Reader. Yeah. We, look, we looked at each other the first time we met, and I think we both said, you're not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Uh, uh, all right. Well, that yeah. was a lightning round. Thank you so much for uh, – Okay. Playing along with that, we just got a couple more questions, and we'll talk about yeah. the tour and uh, let you get on with your merry evening. Merry. Uh, what's the biggest challenge you kind of face in Fu Manchu at the moment? What's what's something that you, as a band you're kind of looking looking for, or just like something that you guys are trying to overcome as a as a project? Um, I mean, nothing. I mean nothing really i mean we just have like a lot of uh desire to play this new record <laughs> so you know i mean that's that's pretty much it it's just uh the challenge is 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 um writing a good set list <laughs> that's always a challenge i think any band that has multiple records you know it's like you very easily do the same kind of set but it's like for i mean at least in my my view it's kind of like i don't I've never been agreeant with giving everybody, you know, this is what they want. Give them what they want. No, yeah. that's, you know, so you should try and vary it a little bit, but then of course, you know, you don't want people to be disappointed, but I think if you just have a good show in general, people won't be disappointed, you know? Yeah. Just doesn't matter. And then, you know, that's how you turn people on to new songs. They maybe haven't heard or. Yeah. I mean, that's a big, I think a big challenge is, is just playing enough, of the new record you know yeah well it's cool to hear that you know that excited about it. i mean it's a great it's a great record yeah i mean it's like we're really really stoked to you know have i mean it's it's just it's not always that way it's like you record a record and then it's like you know there's maybe two two songs two or three songs that you'll play from it but i want to you know i'd love to be playing five songs a night you know if we could so oh yeah um what uh how do you deal with imposter syndrome i always ask everybody on the show that how do you deal if if you deal with it at all or if you don't care about it what is something that gets you through it and how do you stop comparing yourself or how do you just what how do you think about imposter syndrome um i'm not sure what that is you'd have to explain it to me well that's it that that's a great answer right there uh imposter syndrome where you just basically compare yourself to other people thinking that you're not stacking up to uh other people other drummers other musicians is that oh um i don't really i i don't really think about um i mean that's more something that's internal i don't really look at like what other people are doing because it doesn't really uh it doesn't really make sense to me because i can't be that person I can't be anything like what they're doing Um, and nobody can be me. So, you know, I mean, it's more, I guess for me, that kind of thing has to go with more like, you know, am I putting the effort in where it needs to be, you know, or am I, am I more concerned about the things that really don't matter, that sort of stuff, you know, but as far as imposter syndrome with like, do I deserve to be where I'm at? That kind of thing. I, I don't, I mean, does anybody deserve that? <laughs> it's just like, we're all kind of like, you know, we all have to get, uh, what is that? We're preparation and opportunity meet lucky. You yeah. have to get lucky at some point. So it's kind of like, uh, yeah, if I, if I, if I guess if things were like, if there was a master plan and everything was going according to the plan, then I would be more concerned with that sort of thing. But there isn't one. It's just kind of like, we're lucky to be doing what we're doing. We're lucky that anybody gives a shit after all this time, you know? So I just kind of look at that and go like, okay, you know, what are the, what does my next six months look like? You know? And then, and then, you know, you all of a sudden, you know, it's kind of like you wake up one day and you go like, shit, 
I've been in this band for 22 years, you know, or I've been in ba or I've been in bands nonstop since I was 14, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, I mean, I know that I know that I can play the drums. I know that I could do that. I know I can carry a tune, you know, I could tell a dirty joke and I got a decent first kiss, but other than that, I'm, you know, <laughs> everything else is subject to change. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. I love it. That, that was a great answer. You know, um, <laughs> Hey, let's, let's, uh, tell people what they need to hear. You're going to be picking off your tour at the Brooklyn Paramount September 5th. Cannot wait for that show with clutch and rival sons. Yes. Um, very very good. Yeah. Very good to see those guys. Uh, Jay Buchanan is, a uh, an old, an old friend, uh, used to play on demo stuff of his a long time ago when he was uh, doing different types of music guys playing keyboards for him. Uh, Jesse uh, Nason is a guy that I used to play with in a thing called Deca Tree. So that'll be cool to see him. And obviously the clutch guys, Neil and John Paul and Tim and everybody, you know, the whole, the whole crew, good to be out with them. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And then, uh, and then we go back to Europe on our own, uh, starting in Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. Uh, at the beginning of October and then Athens, Greece, and then back to Germany and the UK. And uh, we rescheduled a uh, Troubadour show for December 6th, I believe, which was this month. And then the other shows are getting working on rescheduled as well uh, from my little haphazard incident. So uh, hold on to your tickets. We're not canceling, we're postponing. And uh, and then also probably, um, I think it was announced a couple of days ago, the Sun and Sail, first two Sun and Sail records are going to be reissued by Heavy Psych Sound. And then we have a new one that's coming out, uh, I believe, possibly in October. Pretty sure. So we'll probably be doing some stuff with that. Um, if Fu Manchu is not doing much in December, we might do some things around here with that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm working on just kind of trying to get the songs done for the next Jacket Thief record. And then next year we'll be more touring, uh, wrapping up my summer session here with students. But uh, uh, because I'm home and because I was going to be having a break in that series, I, I will be around uh, if anybody's in the Orange County area, wants to do lessons, uh, you can hit me up, scottreaderdrums.com. You can uh, call or text 714-264-1309. I do have some openings because I have students that are going on their last minute, you know, summer trips and stuff right before they go back to school. So a few openings, maybe five, you know, if someone wants to hit me up about that. And uh, yeah, just, you know, trying to keep learning, <laughs> try to get better. Well, I love it. Scott Reader, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for doing this. And uh, thank you. Very excited about your tour and cannot wait to see you. We got awesome. Big, big pop of producer yeah. back there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rock on, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure, guys. Thanks a lot for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Take it easy. Hey, for the love of God, please subscribe to our Patreon for like a dollar a month. That would help out a lot. Podcasts are, fun fact, really expensive to run. And I really enjoy doing this. So if you want to keep on seeing stuff like this, help me out. Also, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.